what we're going to do today is, to, is show you how the uh, fluids will react with the actual metal surface. Now, I'm presenting to you today three of the products. One, we had our Synmax. Uh, two of the products, which are very nationally known. One is the General Motors power steering fluid. Now, this is equal to most of the fluids that are out there today that you can buy at your national brand. Another product that we have is uh, from Appleton, Appleton Synthetic Power Steering Fluid. Now, the reason I share about Appleton, it's a great rack. We, we sell them here at Left Hander, but uh, as many power steering unit companies, they like to have their own formulation as well, and we love Appleton. Now, so what I'm going to do, now many of you guys have seen this before. This is what we call like a Timken bearing machine. Uh, uh, many companies use something similar to this, such as Schaefer's or Amsoil or Royal Purple or others. And basically you have a motor which turns a shaft. We have a, a testing race and then a bearing which is very similar to what you would find in any wheel bearing. And then friction is applied. Now there's many tricks on how to do this, but we're going to start with fresh bearings every time. We're going to wait a few seconds for the additive packages to try to come in, and then we're going to hit it hard. Okay, here we go. Here, let's start out with the GM power steering fluid. Now, as we said, power steering fluids are nothing more than uh, hydraulic oils, okay? Let's turn the machine on. Here we go. Now, I'm going to wait while I'm talking. If you can hear me, I'm going to be a little louder. Uh, we're going to wait for a few seconds for this to try to work itself in. We're going to try to have the additive packages. Now, you can hear through the microphone how this is working, all right? As I said, this product here is, is found in, in just about everywhere that you're able to purchase it. It's an OEM fluid equal to your Ford or uh, General Motors or others. So, now you can hear when you have a, a hydrodynamic film, it's doing a pretty good job. That's the fluid. But let's see how the additive package goes to work. Now, I'm being very honest here. Now, maybe the additives didn't work in. Let's work a little more. Now, as I said, when you have fluid, you have a little bit of barrier. But the problem we run into is when you first start the pump and the system, and it's bare. Let's listen to that again. I can't even lift this up. You're starting to see it smoke a little bit, too. Well, now I'm not playing any tricks. I just got one hand here. Well, that didn't go too well, did it? Now, as I said, I'm not trying to extend any time or do any options on anyone. If you were to see this and if I were to wipe this out, you would see a tremendous amount of metal shavings, which, which this has produced. Now we're going to wipe the table clean, and we're going to go to our other product. Now while I'm doing this, I'm going to replace the bearing with a new one. You see, one of the tricks that would always work with these bearings was that once it got wore down, then you could put vegetable oil in there and work. But when you start with a brand new one, then you really know what's going on. Let's tighten this down. We're going to put this back in. Very simple. We're ready to go. And I did that wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. Should have locked it there. All righty. We're ready to go. A little bit of mechanical thing there. So here we have the Appleton fluid. Now this is uh, made and designed specifically for Appleton and other racks. I'm sure some of you gentlemen out there have purchased this. This is actually manufactured by uh, LubeTech. The reason I know it says it's manufactured by LubeTech because it does say that on the back of the bottle. We love LubeTech. They make a lot of great products. So, let's start this again. We have a fresh bearing. Now, 
We're gonna let we're gonna let the fluid work in here now. That's a brand new bearing. As I said, when you got the fluid, but what we're testing on here is when the pump first starts and we're getting it going, or when the viscosity starts breaking down, is when it'll start to affect the metal. So let's wait a little bit and listen to see if, if any additive package is working into the bearing. Now it's doing a little better than the GM. Well, maybe we should let the oil work in a little longer here. Oh, let's wait about five more seconds. Now, as I said, this is a synthetic product, which probably will do very well on the hydraulic stability, but is it going to do good on the anti-wear? This is that 5% additive we were talking about. Here we go. Oops, almost up the table over. Um, well, as you can see, it wasn't doing that well. Now, I know a lot of guys out there might say, hey, you're doing a trick or something like that. Well, I'll tell you what. If you think this is a trick of what we're doing here, all right, I invite you to come on out, give me a call. We'll test whatever you got, okay? And we'll show you what it is. Now, to be fair, I'm going to take this bearing off. We'll set it down. This was the Appleton bearing. That was the uh, GM bearing. And now we're going to use a brand new bearing. Brand new bullet all the way around. for the Sinmax. Here's a brand new bottle of the Sinmax power steering fluid. I'll talk a little bit about this in a minute. Now, first when this starts, what I want you to see, if you can look closely, is the oil really crawls on here very, very well. Now what we're going to do is this is a thin oil. It's not a gear loop. It takes a little bit to work in. So we're going to try to let the additive package work in. With, with you hear the sound? Now. What this has, all right, I'm doing it the same with both products. What this has is the synthetic base oils, the PolyX viscosity stabilization package, the diamond-like additives, which are going to wear into here, the seal rejuvenation package, and everything else. Ah, you hear it getting quieter, don't you? I might say, Clayton, well, you can be able to do that with uh, uh, a variety of other products. Yes, that is true, and I'm not going to mention their names. But they do not have the viscosity stability that this does over the long haul. Oh, by golly. Now, hold on, look. There's nothing over here. There's no cords. There's no nothing. That's pretty good. Well, I can even see the cameraman's impressed with this one. Now, I'm going to put some... Clayton, that's got to be a trick. Huh. Well, hold on. We're going to take away all the trickery to it, okay? We're going to take the oil off here. Let's have a dry start up now. Look at that, I'm holding on to it. The 
I said, Clayton, I bet that's really worn down, ain't it? Well, I know you can't see it, but this has like one-third, because it had to cut in, of the wear of the other products, but it's shiny, and it's a lot less, and it's beautiful. So, Clayton, what's all that mean? Well, this was an honest test. I, I challenge you to be able to use this product against any other power steering fluid. But this is here to share with you how an aerospace formulation does make a difference. How additive packages and viscosity does make a difference. Well, why is that so important, Clayton? I'll tell you why. You've got a $400 pump. You've got yourself a, a $1,300 to $1,400 rack, depending. And with the lines and, and the whole system, you could have as much as $2,000 into this business model, all right? Now, wouldn't it be better to use an aerospace additive level product into this than what we previously showed you, which you might currently be doing? Now, as I said, not only is this in a racing application, but you can use this in your standard everyday automobile, trucks, and heavy duty equipment as well. So, this is Clayton Balmas with Synmax University here at Synmax Performance Lubricants.com, and I want to thank you for the time that we had together. Bye.